Hello and welcome to the Dan Cave and welcome to an inbox review of this fairly new release of the De Havilland Mosquito from Airfix in 70 second scale. Uh, so this is the B Mark 16. Uh, so I've just picked that up recently. Uh, so I thought, yeah, I'll do a quick inbox review because there's actually some from what I hear, some nice little features, and it's a nice little kit from Airfix. So uh, let's go on over and have a look in the box and see what's in there. So, as was said in the intro, this is the uh, De Havilland Mosquito B16 from Airfix. Uh, 70 second scale. Looks like uh, two options uh, for color callouts. Uh, the usual, flip it up this way, see what's on the side. So yeah, so two options. One from 571 Squadron, 1944, and one from 109 Squadron, also in 1944. Uh, so, I think this bit, uh, I suppose this has been relatively hotly anticipated from Airfix. Uh, Certainly, in my view, the last kind of few kits that Airfix have released, new kits, have been pretty decent. Uh, and at the moment, the the standard of kits they're producing is pretty good, and they're pretty enjoyable in 70 second scale. So, uh, so this has been certainly anticipated by quite a few people, certainly by me as well, because uh, from what I recall, there's not a huge amount of mosquito recent toolings in 70 second scale so it'll be interesting to see what this looks like in the box so let's get it open uh, so yeah so that sellotape's already been undone so we have the usual box of plastic uh, unfortunately there are some loose bits in there which is not a good sign as usual uh, but usual bag of plastic, it looks like tear parts are separately bagged. Uh, we've got the instructions, which I'm guessing the decals are folded into. Yeah, they are. And we'll come back and look at them a little bit later. But yeah, we'll put them to, put them to one side for a moment. <coughs> and we've got the instructions. With the usual little bit of history. Uh, feel free to pause if you want to read it in English, French, or German. So we'll come back to the instructions a bit later, but it's Airfix's kind of latest standards with good colour callouts. Uh, hmm. Looks like some interesting features, but we'll have a look at them a bit later. So let's see what's in this bag. So Airfix seal this up. So yeah, so we'll start at this end. And we'll slide it out. Actually, that does look like the piece has come off the sprue as well. Let's just keep that bag, make sure we don't lose anything, and I'll put the clear parts to one side. So we'll just start with whatever's on top first. So this appears to be tail wheel, uh, cockpit parts, and cockpit floor. So, certainly reasonably clean moulding. Uh, let's just zoom in a little bit. Reasonably clean moulding from Airfix. Reasonable level of detail on that cockpit panel. So that's quite nice. Uh, some injector pin markings on the back, but I'm guessing they're probably going to be hidden anyway. So, so yeah, just so far that's looking quite nice. So we've got what looks like the Bombay doors, we've got the option for closed which is a one piece or open. Uh, now what I 
do notice, ah, and that's where the missing part came from, which looks like it's part of the bomb rack. By the looks of it. Uh, so yeah, so a couple of bulkhead parts, probably more cockpit parts, seem to be well, reasonably well detailed. Got some bombs. Now what I do notice actually is on parts like like this one, uh, Airfix seem to have moulded on little separate little tabs, which gives you more things to clean up <clears throat> on the edges. But what it does seem to do is get rid of any injector pin markings on the like of the bomb bay doors. And that is that. That's interesting. I think that's. I don't think I've seen that before unless they've done it in the Beaufort kit which I've not even looked at. But that is kind of new and that maybe actually helps with some of the problem areas that Airfix have had of uh, days gone past. But yes that looks pretty neat and well moulded. A little bit of detail on the inside of the door. Yeah that's, uh, that's quite nice. Uh, so then we've got what appears to be, yeah, two uh, mirrored sprues, which I guess covers parts like the engine and propellers by the looks of it. So, uh, so yeah, so looking at that, ah, so this is what I spotted in the instructions. So they seem to have included, so we've got a landing gear door shot looks like doors in the open position and then they've got this piece here which we'll zoom in on which I don't know if the light will pick that up well enough uh, but that's got that piece there has got mask written on it so I think they're intending this to be used basically as a paint mask if you want the undercarriage down so you can pop that in place during the paint stage once you've detailed your landing gear base. So that's quite a nice touch from Airfix and something I've not seen before. Uh, tires got a little bit of tread on them. They're also weighted, which is nice. Uh, yeah, the exhausts are there. Got some parts here which got some arrows on them which I guess is to give you some orientation. Nice big chunky props and looks like fuel tanks for the slipper fuel tanks for under the wing. Uh, and that's basically mirrored on this other sprue here. So then we get on to a well, fuselage. So looks like it's got uh, Airfix's most kind of recent spar type approach, which, if moulded accurately, can be quite good. I think on probably on the F four F Wildcat, uh, which I'm building at the moment. Uh, yeah, I didn't think it was great. It, it was quite a sloppy join. I'm not sure what kind of value the spars added but uh, looking at this part here which is I guess the bomb bay yeah the bottom of the bomb bay base of some of the cockpit yeah you've got your spars so that will get mounted through here and here yeah if, if it's accurately molded there's no guarantee with airfix that that could be good but could also be problematic for alignment if not done correctly uh, and what you can see on this, because it's a mosquito, there is almost no detail on the fuselage. Because basically there wasn't any on the aircraft. It was incredibly clean. Uh, because it was made of wood. Hence it was known as the Wooden Wonder. So that is the fuselage. Well, actually, now that I've kind of caught that in the light, I think there is. 
there does seem to be a slight sinkage just along there very hard to see really only catch that in the light but that is interesting probably going to be hidden by the wing but yeah we'll see uh, the addition of these extra little tabs we do get a lack of uh, pin eject ejector marks on the inside so there is quite a bit of moulded detail on the inside of this got some element of like a harness or piping from the cockpit area same on the other side and the engine nacelles have some frame detail moulded in so that's nice I, I like the look of that that looks a reasonably good job by Airfix and then we're on to the final sprue uh, which is the wings uh, well mainly the wings tailplane and rudder as well horizontal tailplane that is uh, so yeah so on the surface we've got a little bit of landing gear detail in here which is nice uh, the strengthening spar is kind of shown in a raised detail that actually looks quite well done the access panels are nicely defined uh, yeah I'm actually pretty impressed with that from Airfix that looks very nice sprue attachment points are a bit quite chunky yeah they should clean up okay careful clean up as always uh, we do get the pin injection marks on the back of these components but that's okay uh, yeah and that plastic is incredibly thin very thin for air fix on those trailing edges so that could work out quite well actually but possibly quite fragile and if there's any warping uh, yeah that could be hard to deal with but to be honest it looks all neat and straight at the moment so, so there's no yeah there's no real evidence of flash on any of these sprues there's a little bit around some of the edges of the runners but that's you know it's not really going to affect the build of it so Let's just put those parts back to one side. Need to make sure we don't lose this part. Just come loose. So let's have a quick look at the instructions. So So it's kind of usual approach for Airfix with their recent instruction sets. Uh, Kind of highlighting you know the bit you're kind of working with the color uh, humbrol paint call outs as usual and then a few kind of colored call outs to show you where uh, certain parts get painted uh, so yeah so that's that part that we saw with the spars is the kind of Bombay floor start of the cockpit assembly looks like it builds up uh, reasonably nicely actually I have to say uh, so I guess you've got a pilot seat yeah you got bomb sight at the front so yeah so all that assembly gets done and then sits between the two fuselage halves and goes through spar holes uh, yeah looks like you've got an open open bomb bay Horizontal tail planes, rudder. Uh, so we've got yeah the landing gear. Yeah, we got detail of the makes that an auxiliary fuel tank. Quite possibly. Tires are weighted. Nice little bit of detail. Hopefully them inserts will fit quite well, that fit into the centres, but that is quite useful for painting. Ah, so this is the engine exhausts, which I saw. So it looks like on, down the bottom right. 
So basically two parts which interlock which gives you the six exhausts on one side and then there's this part which acts as kind of a mounting piece and then that looks like it then fits and goes through the opening in the nacelle. Well, I suppose that gives a little bit of depth to looking through the exhaust so it's not like that flat piece on one side. So that's an interesting way to do it. Yeah, so we've got forward and rear bulkheads uh, for within the nacelle as well for the landing gear. That's quite a nice touch. Uh, we do have this probably radiator intake on the bottom of the nacelle, just split in half, so that could be problematic with a seam line. Uh, uh, so and this is the this is the part I think was interesting. So yeah, so if you want your landing gear down because they've mounted well basically little attachment points for the landing gear doors they've included the mask with the cutouts basically said do not glue uh, but yeah so a little bit of double sided tape or something stick that in place and that will act as a paint mask so you can go ahead and paint and detail your undercarriage base uh, mask that off, paint your underside and away you go so then the radiators slide in, so again that could be an area where you can kind of do some paint and detail on that beforehand, but then obviously you need to figure out a way to mask off the kind of opening for the radiator. And then it looks like the entire landing gear assembly then attaches afterwards, so you can build all that up, detail it and then attach it. Yes, that looks that looks quite interesting as a kit. So Airfix have started including some kind of wordings which I've not seen before, which I suppose helps explain what they're trying to get the builder to do. And then that's the other side, the other wing. Yeah, and then there's quite a bit of detail on the bomb bay as well. Uh, I guess you can use the closed bomb bay doors as a mask in this case. You get four bombs. It kind of shows you the orientation of parts. And then it's on to the clear parts towards the end. Yes, yeah, so that looks a really good kit. We've got two, two marking options. Uh, you've got the ocean grey dark green over sea grey and then ocean grey dark green over black similar camouflage skeins but different underside so yes yeah, so let's have a look at the decal sheet so yeah so decal sheet is Relatively small, that there are a few kind of stencil details, not a huge amount. Uh, perfectly in register from Airfix, colours look quite good. Possibly a little bit thick, knowing Airfix, they do look a little bit thicker, so you can kind of feel the the raised nature of them on the uh, on the backing sheet. It's a bit, yeah, they can be a little bit raised and obvious when down as decals, but setting solutions, etc., they, they do blend in reasonably okay. But yeah, they look quite good. In fact, I think this overall kind of kit gets a thumbs up from me. Uh, yes, I'm pretty, pretty impressed with that. Quite like that. I think I'll look forward to building it as well. So. Uh, back to me for a quick sum up. So that that was it. That was the uh, that was the, the Havilland Mosquito from Airfix, uh, and that's what's in the box, and that's what it looks like, and that's my thoughts on it. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you've not done so, please give a subscribe. Please pop a like. Please drop a comment. And you never know. At some point in the future, uh, it may be a video build. Who knows?
uh, but certainly yeah it, it looks like a pretty decent kit and good effort from Airfix. Uh, so thank you all for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.